hey, I really believe that the average person, not just the elite, actually has access to the strategies and even the technologies uh, that would increase our lifespan. So I believe that uh, by incorporating those, we easily could get to 100 years of age, but being able to do the things of the world. Hello and welcome to Discovering True Health, your weekly deep dive into health and wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started, as always, please hit the subscribe button. You can also check out additional information on our website, Instagram, and Facebook. All those links are below. So today we're going to learn about brain-boosting nootropics that can help support and improve alertness and focus and productivity. We'll also be learning about dopamine, the chemical compound that's responsible for drive and motivation, and how to trigger it repeatedly without overstimulating it or hitting burnout. My guest joining me today is Dr. Mike Van Thielen, author and founder of Health Freedom Movement. He has his PhD in holistic nutrition and focuses on regenerative medicine, anti-aging, and biohacking strategies. He also was the assistant coach and therapist for the Belgian Olympic swim team for the Olympic Games in Atlanta, and he himself is a current athlete with a current world record holding 28 U.S. national titles. So thank you, Dr. Van Thielen, for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Christy. Now, I'd love to start with hearing about what led you into regenerative medicine, biohacking, since you know, you've know you gone through quite a bit of other types of work, including coaching, being a therapist. and Yeah, it, it was kind of a natural progression. I came here to the United States uh, in 97 as a physical therapist, got interested in more uh, alternative uh, approaches and holistic approaches. So I got my license in acupuncture, board certified Chinese herbs, homeopathy, et cetera. Uh, but after doing that and seeing another thousand patients, I got a little bit disappointed because these, you know, alternative uh, treatments or modalities are indeed less invasive and less harmful than conventional medicine, meaning drugs, injections and surgeries. But I really didn't get the lasting results I was hoping for either. So I decided to go back to basics and I got my PhD in holistic nutrition and also started looking really closely uh, at Mother Nature and the animals in the wild. Uh, because they hold the truths about health for sure. And by combining those two, I really got confident in helping anybody regain control of their health, optimize their health, or biohack, meaning objectively reverse their biological age. And so uh, from that moment on, I started writing books and speaking on uh, stages. And uh, from that, I got into anti-aging and longevity. And then it was the era after that of regenerative medicine and stem cell-based therapies. I was the CEO of a stem cell clinic where we treated top athletes, NFL players, heavyweight, weight champion, boxers, et cetera. And then COVID came uh, and uh, closed the doors and I had to kind of refine some purpose for myself. And uh, that's when I started to back... Uh, on mentoring and coaching people on their health, their business and their business goals or their personal goals. I also have some corporate programs. But today I'm uh, considered a an, uh, an, uh, biohacking expert. I uh, speak at congresses, conferences. I was on last month's uh, cover of the Biohackers Magazine issue. And so um, that's what we're doing today. So it's kind of a natural progression where we stay on the edge when it comes to health, not disease. Oh, amazing. Yeah, you've had quite the quite the history and progression. It's uh it's fascinating how so many doctors are starting to get into the more natural, natural stuff. Um, you know, after kind of working with mainstream medicine and uh, medications and trying to figure out figure out true health. Um, let's start with biohacking. For those that don't know what it is, what is biohacking? Well, there's many definitions. It's an amorphous term that could cover many things. But in my dictionary, it's basically upgrading your body, your mind, and your life. When it comes to health, it means objectively reversing bi your biological age. Because today, I really believe that the average person, not just the elite, actually has access to the strategies and even the technologies uh, that would increase our lifespan. So I believe that uh, by incorporating those, we easily could get to 100 years of age, 
but being able to do the things a 40 year old can do. So you're a hundred and you can go hiking or traveling or whatever it is that you like to do. And I think that is very realistic today if we implement uh, these biohacking strategies. Right, yeah, it's that health span versus lifespan idea. Yeah. Um, what what are some of the top uh, strategies, uh, biohacking strategies that that you recommend to achieve that? Yes, uh, well, there's much out there, obviously. Uh, I always start with seven foundations, but it also kind of depends on the clients that I have. I Generally speaking, I put people in three categories. Unfortunately, most people fall in that first one where we have to regain control of our health first. So people are either in pain or they're overweight or they're diagnosed with some type of a medical condition. So we got to eradicate all that and get back to what we call quote unquote normal. Then we need to, in the second phase, optimize our health. We need to implement lifestyle modifications so we can be fit and strong and vital, being in control of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. And only then, stage number three, would optimal health be the ideal foundation to maximize the benefits of biohacking? So again, there's no silver bullet uh, or magic bullet, if you will. Uh, we really got to see where somebody is. And based on what stage they are, there obviously are different strategies that we need to employ to get to that next stage. But uh, some people think it has to be expensive or we need to have this very high-end expensive technology, and that's obviously not true. Uh, everybody always should start with the basics and building a solid foundation for health and reversing our biological age. And so uh, in my latest book, The Eyes of Method, I have explained those seven foundations, which are uh, water, air, um, uh, movement, rest and sleep, and then light, uh, upgrading your diet. And most importantly, probably the number seven is the mind, the mindset. So those are seven areas in which we can upgrade everything uh, to get significant results and build that solid foundation. Beautiful. Yes, the mindset piece is so important. I'd love to get into a little bit more detail sure. about that a little bit. Um, the past few years, the science has advanced. We've heard a lot more about brain boosting supplements called nootropics. So what are nootropics um, and how can they enhance our cognitive abilities? Yeah, I got more interested in during COVID because during that uh, pandemic area, uh, I was asked by a colleague of mine to help out with pre-screening calls for people who were seeking medical marijuana cards. And mm -hmm. so I said, sure, why not? So I ended up to talking uh, a few hundred people per week. And to my surprise, there's so many people out there with anxiety, depression, uh, PTSD, ADHD, right? And they all have similar mental conditions and problems. And yes, there's drugs and surgeries out there, uh, but there were some underlying issues too that I wanted to write about in my new book and we can talk about that. But uh, to answer your question, a lot of those people obviously are on drugs, whether it's Wellbutrin or Ritalin, and many of them are on Adderall. And even though Adderall, when I talk to this patient, seem to be helping them getting into that zone or being able to focus or get a job done, we all can read the insert and the possible adverse reaction. And besides addiction, it's obviously an increased heart rate, uh, increased chance of heart disease, seizures, epilepsy, psychosis, and the list goes on. So it's not something that I can recommend necessarily. So they classify those drugs as smart drugs because they help with memory, they help with focus, attention span, etc. But on the other side, we have natural alternatives that also have been proven by research to help with memory, focus, etc. And we call those nootropics. So nootropics are the natural alternatives that don't have the jittery effects or don't have any uh, dependency or any adverse reactions. And there's many nootropics on the market. Some of them seem to be working well, others not necessarily. And then obviously, just like in the whole supplement industry, we got to be careful because also there are many companies and people that are just there to make a quick buck on people and their the content uh, is not always what we want to, uh, you know, what we want to take and not always is what's going to work. So we got to be always be careful uh, doing that also. But um, I, uh, because I talked to all these people, I really wanted to come up with uh, a, a nootropic alternative for those drugs, for those smart drugs. And uh, one of the nootropics, and there's a few good ones that I found, but one of them uh, is called Focus Plus. And um Basically, it started with a key ingredient called biocitroid, which is a patented terpene 
from a specific type of citrus fruit, actually blood orange from the Southeast region of Asia. And at 30 milligrams or higher, uh, this biocitrate is able to cross the blood brain barrier. So unlike any other supplements, which take usually a few weeks to build up in the system and to see any hopefully positive effect, this biocitrate works within about 30 minutes. And so when I got in contact with the company, they had they had the exclusive rights to this ingredient in the United States, but they really hadn't developed a product yet. So together with some other people, we put our brains together and said, what other ingredients do we really want in here? So we added three more key ingredients. Number one, uh, L-tyrosine, which is a known amino acid that helps with memory, focus, and uh, brain functions. Number two, phenylaniline, which is a neuroagent, uh, which again helps with memory, focus, photographic memory, and those types of things. And then the last one, phosphatidyl, which probably is the most important one from a long-term point of view because phosphatidyl, healthy fat in our body and our brain, stimulates NGF, nerve growth factor, uh, which basically means there's a stimulation of the formation of new brain cells, better neurotransmission, better connectivity. So what we've seen is that the combination of those four um, is a healthy alternative without the side effects and is able to optimize and balance those five intelligence hormones to get you into the zone, get you into a better focus. Uh, so for all of people, it helps, just people with ADHD and problems focusing. And so some of a fair amount of those people have been able to stop their drug and take something that uh, would be better for them, uh, natural without a side effects. And then obviously we also have the top athletes that are always experimenting to get into that zone a little bit easier. And so there's also on the other spectrum, top athletes that are using uh, this natural alternative. Now, to be honest with you, uh, it doesn't work for everybody. That's why I tell people just try it. Actually, your listeners could get a free sample at trysmartpill.com. And uh, if you feel that it did does anything, take a little bit longer, see if it does the job for you. And if not, don't waste your money, right? That's beautiful. We'll post a link to that below. Thank you for that. Um, what's what's just so I can understand, what's the difference between a nootropic and like a medication like Adderall as far as the brain chemicals go and finding that zone, finding that focus is do the nootropics more support the or enhance the production of it? And then the and then the drug, the pharmaceutical drug just causes them to dump. I mean, what's what's yeah, the it's, it's, yes, it's a good question. It uh, <clears throat> in order to to answer that, uh, we really need to understand the five intelligence hormones, right? Because the drugs, of course, have the side effects. The nootropics don't have those. But Adderall, for example, only addresses uh, two of the five intelligence hormones. Uh, so we have five intelligence hormones: dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and serotonin. Now, if those five uh, neurotransmitters, intelligence hormones. When they are balanced and in optimal range, that's when we're really in the zone. Uh, no distractions. Uh, we win the race. You, we make that last three-pointer. We uh, we crush our killer presentation in front of 10,000 people. Whatever it may be, that's when we're truly in the zone. But then those hormones need to be optimal and in balance. Now, most of us today are what we call in a dopamine overload. Uh, dopamine is what we also call the reward hormone. When our brain squirts a little dopamine, it feels good. It's like getting a pet on the back. And so today, I believe most of us are in the dopamine overload because we eat sugary foods, sugary drinks, energy drinks, coffee, which all give you that dopamine squir uh, squirt, uh, which feels good, right? It's a feel-good hormone. Uh, but now we have social media, which is a great contributor to uh, most of us being in a dopamine overload because when somebody likes your comment or hearts your Instagram, whatever it may be, it's that squirt of dopamine. And so we seek consciously or unconsciously, we seek more of it. And that's why we tend to spend more time on social media than we want to, or that's why we're addicted to it. And so what happens now when dopamine is in an overload and there's no balance in those intelligence hormones and the dopamine overload causes what we call brain fog, uh, inability to focus, procrastination, fidgeting, low intention span, and, you know, just not being able to get a job done. And so the first thing with people that experience that brain fog and can't focus is educating on dopamine overload and then make the adjustments, probably upgrading their diet, what they eat, what they drink, no more Red Bulls, no more Monsters, not too much coffee, not too much man-made sugary foods, 
so we can uh, lower the dopamine. And then at the same time, um, you know, balancing those hormones. Um, so that's a step number one. And then step number two, I think, is just what we call simple basics that people don't apply anymore. Uh, if you ask people where they do their work, whether it's a student or whether it's a dad doing projects, it's usually oh, in the living room or on the kitchen table or whatever it may be. And obviously, we got to go back to basic, which means is uh, we need to assign a designated workplace, whether it's at home or at the office. When we go work on something, we got to close the door and tell people not to disturb you. And then we got all these types of devices that we need to be in control of. So if I'm going to focus on a project, I'm going to turn this off because this device is there to serve you, not others. So yes, there's convenience to this. If I need to look something up or Google a research article or need some information from a colleague, I can call them up. Um, but when I'm working on something, I want to put this off or in another room because I don't want to be disturbed while I'm focused on my project by somebody else that needs my information, right? And so now we need to put things in place that eliminate distractions uh, while we work. And then there's many techniques. Uh, a very common one, as you may have heard, uh, may have heard of, is the Pomodoro technique, which basically says once you're in that space and you turn your phone off, etc., you have a timer and you're going to really focus and work intensely without distractions for about 20 or 25 minutes. And then the timer goes off and now there's a mandatory five minute break where you walk away and do something totally different. Then you repeat that cycle four or five times. And so many people are able to produce so much work uh, within those few cycles more than they usually do in a week. And so there's many things that we can implement at no cost to really eliminate distractions and getting focused. But a nootropic like Focus uh, Plus, especially initially, could be a helpful tool to getting back into the zone and becoming productive. And that, and that really, like you were saying, it, it helps balance all the hormones because all the- Yes, what it does, it balances, it helps balance those. That's what we've been seeing with these, these four ingredients. That's what we've been seeing with patients is it helps balance those hormones and optimize those. So it helps them getting to focus, getting into that zone. Got it. So you want to do all these- these uh, list of things you were talking about to bring down the dopamine <laughs> and yeah. then and then the supplement helps kind of balance everything. If you're in a dopamine overload, which I believe most of us are today, especially those that have brain fog and can't focus, can't get the job done and wondering why. Uh, now, people that are healthy, that are in balance, that are meditating, that are, you know, aware of their health, uh, you know, many times they want to stimulate dopamine uh, with you know, curcumin with magnesium, with a healthy diet, uh, with exercise, those are all things that would stimulate dopamine also, right? So yeah. it's about finding that balance. And when you get into the zone, then you know you have that balance. Uh, my book is about getting in the zone on demand because most people think it's just for athletes, but everybody can what, create what I call a power routine that they can depend on each and every time to get in the zone by just turning that on and off. And the key ingredients are basically the same for every human being, but it needs to be customized. And once we help clients with that routine, they have something that they can depend on when they need to work, when they need to deliver, when they need to run that marathon and win, or when they need to go on stage and perform uh, music, in whatever it may be, or crush their sales goals. Um, it is getting people into a power routine that works for them, getting them into the zone. And the Focus Plus may or may not be a part of that routine. Right. So you, you mentioned your book and, and this is what your book is on. Can you mention a couple of the keys to help us kind of stimulate or trigger that dopamine that we can utilize? Well, yeah, like I said, uh, in a healthy organism, this is the book, The Eyes of Method. So it's about productivity, focus, freeing up time and upgrading body, mind and life, which is biohacking. Um, but uh, yes, it's uh, there's many precursors to dopamine. Uh, which are magnesium and curcumin and uh, other supplements, a healthy diet um, and rest and sleep and exercise. Anything healthy will actually stimulate dopamine. Anything unhealthy like man-made food, uh, foods, refined sugars, social media, those are all the things that kind of create an overload of the dopamine. So we got to find that balance. So we first got to establish whether you're in overload or whether you're deficient in dopamine. But most people today, because of social media, uh, being highly stressed and uh, having that brain fog and having the inability to focus, you're probably in a dopamine overload right now. 
Absolutely. I know. I, I know I catch myself in that too. I'm like, Oh, we all do. <laughs> Let's be honest. We all do. Yeah. yeah I got to implement some more strategies. Um, so you, now what about procrastination? Is there, are there hacks to procrastination? Can we figure out a way? Cause I know that's a big one for me. Yeah, there's there's certainly many hacks to pro, uh, procrastination. Uh, I write write about anger, frustration, procrastination, fidgeting in the book, and they all each have their little tips and strategies that we can overcome them. But the basics come again. What we just talked about has to do with procrastination, right? If you can't focus, and um, if um, if you're distracted, you can't get started and not getting started is procrastinating, right? And you always find excuses. So that comes back to the dopamine overload. But I also think if we dig a little bit deeper, uh, it also depends on your purpose in life. And what I found talking to hundreds of people um, with those mental conditions, anxiety, depression, PTSD, is that yes, there's therapies and drugs and supplements, but a lot of these people have no purpose in life. And I realized during the pandemic, not just after the pandemic, that most people don't have a purpose in life. And there's different reasons for that, right? When we're born, we automatically, society pushes us in a certain direction. We got to go to school. We got to go to college. Then we got to work for somebody else. And when we're 65, we can retire. And there's the golden years, which usually never come. Or it's our parents and teachers, because if dad's a lawyer, he probably wants you to go to law school. If mom's a doctor, they probably push you into medical school. But what is your passion? What is your purpose? Uh, just was on a TEDx stage with an, uh, a very successful eye surgeon. And uh, he was on a TEDx stage. And it was like, he's very successful, very good what he does because they pushed him in that way. But that's not his purpose, passion. Even if you're excellent at what you do, it does not mean you're living your purpose. You're making money. You got a nice car. You got a nice house maybe, but there's not that fulfillment. So today with my mentees, I really talk or try to identify their true purpose, their true passion. And once we identify that purpose, then there's fire in the stomach, there's passion. And the next step then is we need to really start taking control of our life because most people are going through the day, trying to catch up, putting out fires. The boss throws extra work at them. They go home, they got to bring the kids to soccer. Then they got to do something for the partner and we never can caught up even financially. And if you imagine yourself in a situation where you don't know what tomorrow brings next week, next month or next year, I would get anxious and worried and depressed sometimes probably. And so it it's about finding that purpose is now regaining control of our life. We need to start scripting our life. We need to be in control of our agenda, our calendar. We got to have those goals. We got to have those dreams. We got to get the stepping stones. We got to surround ourselves with those right people that will help us to reach our highest potential. And the more control we get over our own life, the more clarity there is. And the more clarity there is, the less stress there is, right? So purpose and control. And we're talking about procrastination. If you have a purpose and you have your agenda tomorrow and you need to do something, there is no procrastination because you're doing it for you. You know why you're doing it. And it's not an obstacle. It's an extra stepping stone closer to your goals and dreams. So I think procrastination also had, has a lot to do with direction and strategy and what if I have to do homework on a subject I don't care about even the best person in the world will try to procrastinate because I'm not interested so I think purpose and passion have also a lot to do with focus and purpose and productivity right so it's kind of like maybe you're out of alignment if yes exactly and who wants to do things you don't want to do or do things you don't see benefit your purpose or your dreams or your goals nobody right absolutely yeah. those are great thank you for sharing that now you mentioned earlier the supplement market as we know is quite vast and it's unregulated what makes an effective nootropic supplement what should we look out for in supplements that can be harmful or just simply ineffective as opposed to some that you know like yours that are actually effective yeah in my first book health for life i basically have a whole chapter on the criteria to select the right supplement and there's a lot that comes into it obviously as a layman you can look at the ingredients if you can't read them that means they're chemicals we don't want those a lot of supplements are synthetic even if we take a simple supplement like vitamin C, 
Uh, 99% of the vitamin C synthetic, synthetic minerals and vitamins do not get absorbed by our body, maybe at an 8% rate. So that's why nurses call most supplements bedpan pills because they find them in the bedpans, right? They don't get absorbed. And so you're wasting your money, right? So first of all, we need natural ingredients. And then where do those ingredients come from? Are they clean? Because many things that are important, there may be toxins on top of it. So yeah, we may get good stuff, but if there's more bad stuff in the capsule that you're swallowing, you're canceling out the benefits, right? Uh, then there's the absorption of bioavailability. Then there's the carrier, which means is, you know, does it get to the digestive tract and will it be absorbed by the in small intestine so it gets to a cellular level? If not, again, it's all wasted. So there's so many criteria to select a, a good supplement. And most of the time you can get medical grade or professionally grade, grade supplements at the regular store um, available to you because they need to be prescribed. And so if there's no physician available at a health food store, then uh, again, those those people owning those stores Nothing wrong with it, but they don't know what they're getting. Like I said, it's unregulated. Eight out of 10 supplements, the label doesn't match the contents. So where are we? So therefore, when I work with my clients, they need to be professional medical grade supplements. So at least we know that the label matches the content. And uh, many times when I work with a company, I would call them up and ask a certificate of analysis, which kind of shows exactly what's in the supplement. I ask the sourcing of the product. I ask if there's been testing done for toxins, uh, you know, and those types of things, which the layman can do, but that's why you need uh, coaches like you, me, or functional medicine doctors that have a little bit more knowledge, knowledge to guide you into that right direction. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's so, yeah, the supplement industry is a little scary. <laughs> so <it's>, yes. <laughs> Got to be careful. Um, now we've all heard rumors about maybe another variant coming up and, there's a little uncertainty around that. Um, what kind of advice do you have around mindset for those listening to kind of, if we are moving in that direction, possibly, what, what's what's some good mindset tips? Well, you know, we need to start using common sense, right? Uh, like, again, the signs used to be great. And now looking at signs is, is difficult because there's signs and there's propaganda, signs that is used to propagate or push a certain agenda. So it becomes more and more difficult to, to figure out what's real signs and, and what's put there for other purposes. Uh, so signs has been abused. Uh, but but we always can count on common sense if you choose to critically think and look at things objectively without having some kind of, uh, you know, uh, left or right or blue or red bias. Uh, we need to stay independent. We need to be able to step back and critically think about things because you're saying already, like, there may be coming some variant, variant, variants. How do they know that, Right. So, so to me, it's already that alone says, are oh, they planting it? They want to have more restrictions. They're going to start again with, you know, masks and all the kind of stuff. And, and the people that did get vaccinated or did wear masks, hopefully they were open-minded enough to look at the post studies to actually learn about the ineffectiveness of a mask and the ineffectiveness of a vaccine. Um, and so if they're not, they're just not willing to. And, and again, you, you can't learn pigs to sing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But uh, I just had this discussion an hour ago with a friend of mine because he was so disappointed that one of his friends uh, is basically waiting to get another shot. And he hoped that he would have learned from the first time. And I told him last year already, it's not going to happen. Uh, people are so close minded and even unwilling to leave their own comfort zone to even read or watch a video that may change their mind or at least make them curious. So my message to people is, you know, no matter your political orientation or, you know, no matter what you believe, just from a health point of view, just use your common sense. And sometimes you learn a lot by listening or reading things that you think are wrong. I've said through my life in many seminars that I thought were totally wrong, but those became examples when I was teaching oh, how not to do it. So you always learn something, even if you watch things that you think are totally wrong. So just be more open-minded. And if this variant come, you need to not comply because this has nothing to do with disease. This has nothing to do. This is about 
more restrictions, more restrictions, more control, and about globalism. And when I say that word globalism, people call me a, a conspiracy theorist. No, it's not a hidden agenda. It's open. It's been open forever. And all you need to do is Google it and start reading it. It's not an opinion. It's out there. They presented it to us and they're putting in stepping stones in place. And I hope less of us are going to be compliant with vaccinations and masks if this uh, silly variant uh, pops up in September, begin October. I don't know. Yes, we shall see. It's, uh, <laughs> um, thank you for sharing that. If we don't comply, nothing will happen and nothing will change. But if we comply, we're going to get in more restrictions and we're going to be more controlled. Yeah, it's about unity and powers and num power numbers at this point. If, if everybody mm -hmm. can unify on this, um, which may or may not happen, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where everybody's at, I guess. That's um, right. Now, you've written quite a few books. Uh, you also have your nootropic product. Uh, for those who'd like to check you out, can, uh, can you share a little bit more about the books you have? Um, yeah, I got eight books. Um, I got one on stem cells, fibromyalgia. We just talked about the pandemic. Ooh, it's not here. Um, my best-selling book was on EMR, electromagnetic frequencies and radiation, and how to mitigate those. Uh, my latest book is probably a little bit broader than just health because we talked about it today, focus, productivity, purpose, taking control of your life. I got a stem cell book, uh, which is a consumer guide. Uh, my first book, Health for Life 2014, which is regular health principles. And uh, so, yes, you can find everything on my website, biohackingunlimited.com. My books are there. My mentorship programs in, are there. You can sign up free for my newsletter. Uh, events are there. Costa Rica VIP retreats are there. Everything that you may uh, find on me, you can start at the website biohackingunlimited.com. Beautiful. And I'll post links below. I'll also post a link to his um, the free trial. You can try out his nootropic, which is quite quite incredible to be able to do that. So thank you. Um, before we wrap it up, do you have any final words for listeners just around, I guess, mindset or those who are trying to get forward in life and they're they're struggling and maybe having trouble balancing these brain chemicals with all the bombardment from EMFs and technology? Yeah, going back to basics, right? We talked about when it comes to focus and stuff like that. But uh, when it comes to mindset, we overlook it. The mind is so powerful. I had to learn that myself. I was focused on the body. I was an athlete. So everything is physique and body. So it took me even a long time to realize how powerful the mind is. The mind controls the body. The mind controls disease. You can use the mind to really eradicate disease too. Uh, that doesn't happen overnight, but that's possible. I've seen it. It's been scientifically proven uh, to rewire the brain like Joe Dispenza uh, information and things like that. But at the same time, the mind not just only controls the body, it also basically creates your destiny. For example, if you're labeled with a disease like Parkinson's or cancer or whatever, that label subconsciously is a blueprint in your mind. And if you think about it every day, then you actually are going to go having cancer, keeping cancer and dying of cancer. If you can change that mindset and if you change your belief system and if you eliminate false core beliefs and you're convinced you're going to conquer that cancer and there's no doubt in your mind, then the universe only has one option, which is a big win. And so you can see that mindset and working on your belief system, managing and controlling your emotions and your feelings, using techniques like visualization, manifestation, meditation, breath work, which is works for me the best breath work, and even technologies such as brain tap are all things that are available to everybody today to really experience a meditative state within one or two sessions. Two decades ago, when I first tried, I'm sitting there trying to meditate, clearing my mind, and I couldn't. And after a few times, when you don't feel a benefit, you give up, uh, and which I did. But now there's so much guidance and technology available um, that you can experience an improvement or a meditative state uh, in one or two sessions. And when you experience the result, you're more inclined to progress and keep on doing it. So look into those types of things, change your belief system, and it will change your life. Absolutely. Yeah, you just reminded me, I heard something the other day of um, a doctor was talking about his wife having cancer and she was seeing some sort of holistic um coach um, of some sort and he asked her what what type of responsibility are you willing to take 
for your cancer. And she's like, mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for my cancer. He's like, nope. Responsibility is how you respond. What like, and, and I think words are powerful. People are saying, I have, I have this, I have that, you know? It's, it's yeah, and the label itself is not a good thing, right? When the doctors label you, then that's your destiny unless you change that label. And that's a conscious effort. And that's what mindfulness is about. And that's what changing your belief systems is about. It doesn't have to be difficult. You just say, okay, I'm going to do this. And, and then just you probably need some guidance from a coach like me or anybody else that has expertise in there to successfully do that and and look at things and visualize you being cancer free and and being at the wedding of your grandkids and manifest those things and and start believing it and putting a plan and strategy in in uh, place to accomplish that and once you do that your survival rate chances are astronomically higher than when you stay into this negative system where you labeled and you only have six months to li to live maybe a year and if you believe that that's exactly what's going to happen Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Thielen. This You're was welcome for uh, having me, Christy. Thank you. Beautiful conversation. Check out his links below. Check out his book. And he does the coaching as well. Um, he has a lot of great resources for everybody. Um, if you like this video, please like and share with others. This information could really help someone you may know. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to be sure you don't miss out on our future shows. And I will see you all next Wednesday on the next episode of Discovering True Health. Oh, <laughs>